Well, uh, I just have a little uh, message for uh, to this afternoon, and uh, the passage will be in Matthew chapter two. Uh, Matthew chapter two. If anyone has their uh, Bibles with them, because I hope we uh, have some around. Uh, anyway, uh, I just want us to look, uh, just as we've been singing uh, together, and uh, we'll sing a little bit more after uh, we look at the scripture. Uh, if that's all right with everyone, uh, how the wise men worshipped, uh, how they came to uh, to offer their gifts and their love to Jesus Christ. And I want us to, to see how their worship of Jesus is a model for ours, uh, how we should come to God in worship to Him. And so if you have your Bibles in Matthew chapter 2, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start just at the beginning of the chapter and read on down uh, to verse 11. The scripture says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the people, all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east, them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come unto the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for uh, Christ Jesus, uh, Lord, for the greatest gift of all that you've given to us, salvation in his name. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would give us a heart for worship to him. Uh, Lord, that we would come giving our best, as these wise men did, uh, coming in faith and humility and joy in his name. Uh, Lord, we pray that if there are any lost even among us here, uh, Lord, that you would draw them to be saved. Uh, Lord, we pray that Uh, You would be with us this week and help us to uh, share the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for uh, all of our church family, uh, that you would help them uh, in their times of need. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would uh, grant safe travels to those that are going places this holiday season, and that you'd bring them back to worship with us again. And we ask all this, uh, as well as the forgiveness of our sins in your son Jesus, uh, by his name. Amen. All right. So I want us to look at what the the wise men uh, did when on the uh, the first Christmas, and I'd like us to first see what the object of their worship was, and how they came uh, and sacrificed to worship Him. Uh, they had come from a pagan land. They had come from a, a land that did not know God. In Romans one twenty one, we read, we read that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. They did not worship in in their land where they came from. They did not worship the true God. They worshipped idols. They worshipped all things under the sun uh, and not the man, the, the one who made the sun, the God who made uh, all things. Uh, they turn, uh, Their people uh, were turned over to a mind that was 
uh, not convenient, that was not good, that did not love God. In fact, uh, in their culture, uh, they would oftentimes worship their ancestors. They would worship uh, their uh, parents and their parents' parents and those that had come before them, uh, putting them in the place of deity. And uh, being Gentiles, uh, they did not even have uh, the law of God. They didn't have the Old Testament. Uh, the, the scriptures of uh, the Old Testament that was given to the people of God uh, was essentially confined uh, just to the Middle East, just to the area around Palestine and, and somewhat going up towards uh, Babylon. Uh, they did not know what God required uh, of them in those cultures. Romans 3 1 says, What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Uh, the, the, they were coming to uh, the Jews, to, to, to Israel, and they did not know the law of the God of Israel. And yet, the wise men did come. They came down to uh, Israel, they came to Judah, and even they came to them. As we read, quoted in our passage, uh, Thou Bethlehem Ephrata, uh, though thou be little among the tribes of Judah, yet shall come out of thee a ruler. Uh, it was a, a small town in Judah, an insignificant shepherd town that these wise men came to. They worship the success of their ancestors. They worship uh, from or from a uh, their culture. They worship their ancestors. They worship success. They worship all that is created under heaven. And yet here they are coming down to Bethlehem, uh, to uh, a place that uh, no one would uh, really want to come to. If 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 they were coming from a foreign land into Judah, they would want to go to Jerusalem. Uh, they would want to go to where uh, things were uh, happening, but they were sent and went into Bethlehem. Uh, they did not think themselves above condescending and, and, and humbling themselves to go to that place in order to worship God. They uh, came seeking Christ, uh, the child. And uh, the fact that they knew that they were coming seeking a child. He says, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. was another way that they uh, humbled themselves, that, that they came uh, not because of, of uh, flashy scenery or because they were coming seeking a, a, a mighty uh, king on the earth that, that, that was uh, dressed in fine clothes and ate fine food, and lived in a fine house, they came seeking this child, who again, uh, their culture uh, said was not worthy of honor. They worshiped their ancestors. They worshiped the, the, the generations that have come and gone before them. Uh, they would not have thought to come and give worship to a child, or even to think that a child, a newborn child, could be a king. And they came because they came to worship God. Because even though they did not know him perfectly, they did not have the scripture, they only knew what was revealed to them by uh, God's activity in those days, they knew they were coming to worship someone greater than them. In Matthew 1, 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. In Psalm 8, verse 4, we've read so many times, Recently, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Even though it meant leaving their nice houses, as wise men they were surely uh, granted a, a charitable portion by the king in their land. Uh, they left their families, they left their own uh, uh, comfortable area that they lived in. They came down to uh, Israel 
which was uh, one of the, the least uh, liked provinces of Rome in that time. It was considered a slum. Uh, they came down to Judah. They came even down to Bethlehem, to the shepherd town, to come and see and to worship Jesus Christ because they knew who he was. They knew that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that he was born to be a king above all kings. And so their great worship here, I want us to to take as a pattern for our own worship, how we should uh, respond to hearing that Christ has come and presented himself to us and called on us to come in faith and worship him. And the first thing I want us to see is that they came with joy. Even though they came down to Bethlehem, they came with joy in their hearts. In verse 9 we read, When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They were joyful to finally reach their destination, that the star was finally leading them to where the child was, where the king of kings would be. They saw the opportunity and they loved it and they took the opportunity to worship Christ. We sang earlier of the desire of the nations and th- that's what this, uh, that means. And this is what that means, that, that they, Loved him. They had joy in worshiping him. Haggai 2 6 is where we get this from. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once more it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The desire of all nations, uh, that he would come and uh, as we read elsewhere, that to him shall the gathering of the people be, that they will love him, they will desire him, they'll have joy in him, just as we've been given a joy in him and a desire for him. We the nations, we the the descendants of the same pagans, uh, that we have desired him and we're drawn to him. In worship, therefore, we should have this joy and this longing to come and worship Christ. In Isaiah 11:10 we read, "In that day shall there be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious." Uh, again, we seek him, we love him, uh, and this is how worship should be. Uh, our worship should be with this same joy. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight thyself in the Lord, uh, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Uh, By desiring him, by loving him, wanting to come and worship him. When we come and worship, it shouldn't just be a a dry duty that we do. Um, Though that, uh, we know that we have a duty, Uh, Though sometimes we fail and simply treat it as a duty to come and worship, uh, yet we should still have a desire. Uh, That's part of the duty, is to love, to desire to worship, to have joy in the act of worship. Uh, We should not just sing the words of the songs that we sing, but let it come into our heart, understand what they mean. Uh, We shouldn't just read the scripture and so worship, but we should want to read the scripture. We should want to get uh, that that good honey out of the word of God. Uh, All that we do in worship should be out of joy, uh, loving to come and and worship God because of who he is. Uh, That's why the wise men were joyful. That's why they came. That's why they went down into Bethlehem itself. Surely not a pleasant thing for them to do, being used to to living in large houses and among the rich in their land. Surely they wouldn't have naturally wanted to go down into that city. And yet they were joyful going down because of who they were going for. They were going to worship Jesus Christ. 
We should also see that their worship was humble and in faith toward God. In verse 11, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with, Ma- with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Uh, they didn't question when they saw Jesus. Uh, just a young child and Mary, a lowly uh, woman. Uh, they immediately, when they saw, began to worship Christ. Most of Christ's own people rejected him. Uh, They didn't think anything special of him. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Uh, He was just a common child, uh, just uh, born not of nobility, not of any name at all. Uh, likely wearing tattered clothes, uh, hand-me-down clothes. Uh, Jesus, uh, it, it was, uh, he was not something that anyone would naturally desire to worship. And yet they immediately worshiped. Why? Because they had faith in who he was, not in what they saw, not in uh, what they thought uh, about him, what his potential might have been. Rather, they knew that he was born to be king of the Jews, that this was revealed to them by whatever manner it was revealed. And they had faith towards God in it. They came and uh, worshipped him, therefore, in humility, not considering their own selves, but considering him who they worshipped. In verse 11, when they were come into the house, they saw the young child and Mary with his mother and fell down and worshipped him. These kings fell down and worshipped. Uh, in James 4, 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He, he resists uh, the pride of these kings but he gives grace when they humble themselves before him. Hebrews eleven six says that without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, not relying on themselves, relying on God, not thinking much of themselves, but thinking much of Jesus Christ. And so when they came and worshipped, they also gave sacrifice in their worship. Another thing that we ought to take uh, as a lesson from them. They gave of themselves. They gave of the best that they had. In verse 11, when they had opened their treasuries, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. This is also part of the faith that they had. uh, As it's been noted that these gifts mean various things. It was gold because he is a king. It was frankincense because just as the priests offered up incense and the prophets uh, offered up a sweet savor to the Lord, so the Spirit of God would be upon him. And myrrh because he would give his life as a sacrifice for the people. And this is certainly true. Uh, But they gave of their own stuff. They, They offered to him the best of the things that they had. Isaiah 60 verse 6 says, The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dormitories of Midian and uh, 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 Ephah, all they that uh, from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Uh, They brought what they had. They they brought all that they could carry to Christ and they gave of the best of their stuff. Uh, And this we should do also. When we come, we shouldn't just bring the uh, common things, just the things that we would give to anyone else. Uh, We should bring the best that we have. Uh, everything that we can muster, everything that we can uh, bring ourselves to uh, and be brought to by God, we should bring in worship to Him, uh, our own selves and our own lives. Isaiah twenty nine thirteen. Wherefore the Lord said, 
For as much as this people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Uh, This is not what it is to bring all that we can. This is just bringing again the common things, the lip service. Uh, We give lip service to people all the time. Uh, We uh, oftentimes will just uh, uh, offer uh, services to someone and we'll do something for them. And then we, uh, we know that they'll turn it down and we really have no intention of uh, doing it, uh, giving lip service, giving the small things, the easy things. Uh, that's not how it should be with God. We should give him all that we have and have every intention of following through on the promises that we make. Uh, we should should be willing to give to him as to our own selves, uh, as we would have given to us and even more. Uh, we should give God the best that we can bring to bear in worship to him, in all service, in everything that we do. Uh, So did these wise men. Uh, And they did so by faith and humility and joy in Jesus Christ because they desired him. And so this evening, uh, though we've been somewhat short, I hope that we've uh, picked up on a few uh, ideas about worship, uh, the way that we should worship Christ. And I hope we can apply it to our lives uh, this season and and through the rest of next year. And uh, as uh, I said just a moment ago, we should uh, let this terminate itself in service. uh, Coming before Christ and giving Him what we have. And we can all do this uh, even here today in in, uh, ministering one to another uh, as uh, close uh, family and friends here. Uh, Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, We should uh, worship him in in this service and making these promises from God towards one another. So let's let's do that by uh, showing forth the gospel towards our families and friends. And uh, as I... uh, always uh, like to do. Uh, We all know each other here, uh, but I want us, uh, I want to put out the call anyway, that if there's an unbeliever here, uh, the reason that Jesus Christ came is for your salvation. Do you have this joy in Jesus Christ that he gives, that is according to his own person, that he is the desire of nations? To him do the Gentiles seek because of him his own self and his own goodness. He offers himself to you tonight. And I pray that you would lay hold of him. You know that Jesus came to uh, be the judge of the world, uh, that he came to, to, uh, uh, to show himself and, and his goodness in his life and the standard that God requires of us. And if we cannot keep it ourselves, then there is death. At the end, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, eternal punishment from the face of the Lord. But he came also to show the mercy of God. For the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This gift of Christmas, that Jesus Christ came, that as we read in John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, is that if you trust in him, that he will deliver you from your sins. John 1.10 says that he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Uh, It was none of the kings of Judah that came to worship him. It was uh, these few wise men that came from afar that came to worship him but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name if you would come and trust in jesus christ and his goodness and righteousness then you can have this everlasting life and be saved and i pray that if uh, there's any that don't know the lord jesus that uh, you would trust in him before uh, the day of judgment And again, believers, we uh, 
know the Lord Jesus. We know what he's worthy of. We have that joy and desire in our heart as his uh, people. And uh, let's exercise that in uh, our lives this week and uh, throughout the rest of our lives and into the next years. And uh, uh, always be joyful to come before him in worship and do so in faith and humility. Now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for your word. We thank you for Christ Jesus. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give us a love for him and a joy and worship for him. Uh, Lord, we know that we're not perfect in that regard and we need sanctification by your spirit. And we pray that you would give it to us. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to give the best of what we have this week, uh, not only lip service, but the service of our own selves. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them to be saved. And we ask that you would be with uh, all the rest of our church family uh, and all of your people in this Christmas season. Uh, Lord, we love you and thank you for all things. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.